Thanks, Dr. Bentley. Uh, you have been a University of Delaware graduate student, professor at your college in Pennsylvania, managed an online degree at Northwestern State University, Ontem Western Governors University in Utah, and now a University of Texas system program manager. Has someone implored you to go west, young man, go west? Is Hawaii your ultimate destination? <laughs> Uh, I've been to Hawaii. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I just don't think uh, you know we would be able to to live there. Um, it's so expensive. Very so expensive. Congratulations <laughs> on living there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So the next question is: uh, In 2020, in an Inside Higher Ed interview, you mentioned at that time that the pandemic had exposed many vulnerabilities within higher education, including college and university administrations that have gravely underestimated the true cost of building, managing, and scaling innovative digital learning courses and programs. How about in 2023? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that um, those vulnerabilities are, are still um, there. I mean, I think there are, but the flip side is these are new opportunities, right? And so I think, you know, higher ed collectively, we have an opportunity to better serve our students. and we have to do it because, you know, our students are still uh, uh, challenged in terms of, you know, finding the time and the money mm -hmm. to to study with us. And so anything that we can do to help them be successful when they're with us, as well as when they leave to enter the, the, uh, the workforce, you know, we, we, we need to provide that you know, the, the best courses and of course the best wraparound services to, to provide that support to them. That's a great transition to my next question. Now, Dr. Bentley, I'd like to set the stage. One goal of Strata Education Foundation's Beyond Completion Challenge is to improve equitable student outcomes beyond college completion. In January of this year, the UT system received a three-year $1.5 million grant from them to support the expansion of Texas credentials for the future and to further expand micro-credential opportunities that give graduates a competitive edge in the workforce. You entered the stage, sir, in March of this year. Could you share your ideas of this grant as far as equitable student outcomes and competitive edge in the workforce in Texas? How's it going? Well, it's, um, you know, in some ways, even though we received the grant at the beginning of the year, we are still you know, moving forward to, uh, you know, to, to reach our goals for the grant. So, and I would say that uh, we'll definitely need more than three years, you know, even uh -huh. though the grant period is for three years, we're, we really will need more time to look at longitudinal data. I would say that we are in a good place in terms of, you know, having the conversations we need to have with uh, faculty and staff champions to support the work. We're going to be doing more work to talk with our provosts to kind of help us Okay. identify ways in which more faculty and staff can help us reach our goals and in terms of targeting targeting students as well as students of color where we know uh, within certain majors there's a disparity in their uh, earnings potential you know mm -hmm. once they right. actually graduate so we have the data as a system to track you know all of our students but when we actually look at students of color we see those disparities are even worse. And so we will work with each of our campuses. They know their students really well and, uh, and, and really kind of find ways in which we can expand that access to uh, industry recognized credentials through our, our expanded contract with Coursera, which uh, was uh, announced just this year. So we're really excited about its potential because you know all students uh, alumni will have free access to Career Academy's, um, mm -hmm. uh, Coursera's Career Academy, which is made up of professional certificates that we hope will help uh, students stand out uh, more in the world of work. This fall, the University of Texas Coursera launched a micro-credential partnership, which through the new partnership, uh, every student, faculty and staff, and even alumni up to 240,000 students across all nine universities in the system are gaining access to Coursera for no additional cost to them. Other than providing the thousands of courses and certificates free of charge to the individuals, can you share what other techniques or strategies are being done or could be done to help those who historically have faced the greatest barriers in education in the workforce? Yeah, I mean, I and that's where I think the 
this project will be interesting to track because I know as we are engaging in the work that we're doing with the grant, we're really working very closely with our project leads at each of the nine campuses uh -huh. to identify you know, what types of uh, wraparound services can be provided to those students so that we're not just providing, you know, free access, but we're helping students, you know, get enrolled in the courses, helping them stay motivated. I know some campuses, for example, are looking at um, identifying student coaches um, to kind of work with students who enroll in the courses it's a great uh, idea. Through, through Coursera. And so I think things like that will be helpful. Also, there are some additional supports available, like um, the, the Google certificates. If you complete those, students even have access to additional career uh, exploration okay. and career-related uh, supports uh, through an organization called Career Circle. And so that's also like an additional benefit uh, that uh, some of our students uh, will be able to partake in. And, uh, you know, the announcement about the expanded partnership, you know, we are really, the Coursera team has done a really good job of, of scheduling meetings with different constituent, uh, mm -hmm. constituent groups, including our career, you know, academic advisors, career counselors. And so they will also, I think, as they're working with students, be able to, you know, hopefully uh, provide uh, advisement support um, such that the right students can find that access that they need to these uh, micro-credentials and hopefully at the right time in their journey with us, right? So, yes. um, you know, students are just so busy with existing courses. Um, we're also working with our campuses to find ways where faculty can also embed access to those micro-credentials. And so our hope is that, you know, students will have easier access in courses that they're already taking for credit right. versus having to do additional work outside of the courses they're already enrolled in. So I think all of that collectively will, will definitely help. And we'll be able to track to the number of enrollments, course completions, and we'll be able, in my role, I'll be able to share that data back to our project leads so that they can also uh, help us, you know, with marketing efforts and things like that to increase awareness. I'm also ho hopeful that we'll be able to collect uh, student stories. Mm -hmm. um, so working with our marketing team at the system level, as well as locally, I'm hoping that we can have short video clips that uh, students can go, oh, this student kind of sounds like me, looks like uh -huh. me. If they can do it, I can do it. Um, and so I love we that hope idea. to also make that available too. Yeah. As a side note, I can't imagine trying to track 240,000 people with hundreds of thousands of courses. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, right. And this is definitely the beginning of the story. I mean, we, we have well over 240,000 students in our system, but my hope is that uh, those initial few thousand who do take courses with us, my hope is that we'll be able to learn a lot from them such mm -hmm. that that will help, you know, the, the many more thousands of people we want to target over time. So I think we'll learn, the lessons learned will be used to definitely help us as we continue to scale, sure. not just the access, but also those wraparound services to those students who are completing these industry recognized credentials. And my last question, I think you'll enjoy. Finally, related to your, I believe your Twitter or X handle, could you, <laughs> you finish with your sharing your Doctor Who inspired username and the 15th iteration of the series lead actor, Shute uh, Gatwa. No, well, I, I'm I'm really excited. Uh, so I've been a, a, a long time, you know, my my uh, Twitter handle is Black Time Lord, and uh -huh. I used to, when I was uh, much younger, I used to watch um, Doctor Who. My one of my favorite doctors at the time when I started watching it was an actor called Tom Baker, who was you know one of the uh, definitely one of the more popular actors of the show. And then when the show got rebooted, I was, you know, um, really excited. The, the newer episodes were great. It's great that they have, you know, uh, they've diver diversified their, uh, I would say their overall, um, the actors and actresses who are on the show. I think they've mm -hmm. done a great job of just diversifying who, you know, who is on the show, the the, uh, the types of lifestyles that they come from. Um, and it's great to see that, you know, the doctor will be a, uh, someone that kind of looks like me, you know, uh -huh. which uh -huh. I never thought was going to happen. But of course, it's great that, 
you know, the doctor also, um, you know, took on a female form too. Sure. Like I, 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 it's just great to, to, to see that diversity in the characters, diversity in the writing. Um, so definitely looking forward to seeing the new Doctor Who adventures yet to come. I was pulling for Idris Elba, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, th I think a lot of people were, you know, <laughs> okay. but, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe, sure. maybe down the road. Yeah. yeah. Well, good luck in your daunting, but very, very important uh, challenge coming up in the, in the future. And thank you so much yeah, for giving us time. Aloha. No, thank you. Aloha. Thank you. Appreciate it.